hello everyone uh, in this video i will be ask i will be discussing regarding the frequent doubts which the patients have after a vp shun surgery vp shun surgery is a very common surgery which is being done which which is done by me it's usually done when there is a condition called hydrocephalus that is when there is excessive accumulation of fluid within the brain this fluid fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid so if you are watching this video i assume that you have been advised a vp shun surgery or you have already underwent a vp shun surgery and that is why you are seeing this video to understand the various doubts which you usually have okay uh, let me uh, let me tell you the frequent doubts which my patients have the, the frequent doubts which they have is the first one they ask is when they can start showering or taking bath second one when they when can they return return to their activities of daily life third one what physical activities are they restricted fourth one can they exercise or not can they drive or not most important one when can they go back to their work and when can they travel and also they keep asking me what are the dietary restrictions which they have okay so let us answer this questions one by one first question as soon as we discharge the patient the first question which they ask me is when they when can they start taking bath so usually until the suture removal the suture removal is usually done somewhere between 7th to 14th day until then we ask the patient to take care of their incision sites with regular dressing and to avoid showering they can avoid they should avoid wetting the incision sites that is over the scalp where the incisions were taken and also over the abdomen but over the other sites they can use a wet towel to gently mop the area so they need to maintain hygiene but at the same time they should ensure that the incision suture sites are not wet with water but once the sutures are removed after 3 to 4 days they can take their regular bath with a mild soap or you can use a baby baby, baby shampoo which is much safer on the incision sites so probably my answer is clear you can start showering once your sutures are removed 3 days after it try to shower with a gentle detergent like like a baby shampoo that's it let's come to second question the activities of daily life when can they do their regular activities usually by the time the patient is discharged after a successful surgery in more than 90% of the patients the patient will be fully awake they will be normal they will be conscious if there is no other injury to the brain usually they will be able to carry on all their activities of daily life by the time they reach home by the time they reach home then next question are there any restrictions in the physical activities definitely there are some restrictions in the physical activities what shunt is a pipe you can imagine it's a small pipe which is bypassing the obstruction in the brain diverting the fluid in the brain from the brain into the abdominal cavity you should avoid all those activities which can put pressure on this pipe this pipe this shunt is under your skin so it's not visible so avoid those activities which may constrict the pipe that is avoid avoid dresses or any clothing which is tightly putting around your neck or the abdomen which has which can compress the shunt you are not supposed to lift weights which are more than 5 kg 5 kg in weight avoid contact sports avoid heavy physical activities heavy physical activities your daily routine work you can do it unrestricted non daily routine work mild physical activities is always encouraged so what is the physical activity which we encourage we encourage the patient to walk about for half an hour to one hour at least two to three times a day 
this helps in making you feel good it helps in early recovery it prevents a lot of complications like pneumonia deep vein thrombosis in the legs bed so and all these activities so advise the patient to walk at least half an hour to one hour three to ten and three to four times a day we can and the patient can walk about within the home but it's better if you walk about around the home in a garden or on the or on the terrace of your home can the patient drive if the patient is still drowsy obviously patient should not drive if the patient is taking painkillers driving is restricted we don't advise the patient to drive because some of the painkillers can cause drowsiness so if the patient is fully conscious if you have gone for a review for your patient and if they were uh, with your doctor and if a doctor feels that the shunt is fully functional they, then you can start driving once you are off your painkillers after 4 to 6 weeks of the surgery but if it's possible try to use a public transport like a bus or a, or a cab these are more safer than driving yourself so when can you go back to work the same the same conditions apply you should be fully conscious your doctor should have seen you and he should have felt like your shunt is working that is there should be no symptoms or signs of shunt malfunction you should not be having any seizures and you should be off your painkillers when can you go for a travel after see after 4 to 6 weeks but the travel restrictions are avoided you can travel by bus or a train or a car but before traveling by air by an aeroplane do consult your doctor to ensure that you are fit to travel by air and two important things when to contact your doctor what are the symptoms or signs you need to contact your doctor under two conditions if you feel that the shunt is not working either if it's un under draining or over draining or if it's blocked in the second condition when the shunt is infected these are the two common conditions where you are supposed to meet your doctor immediately so what are the signs or symptoms of shunt malfunction the patient may become drowsy he can have persistent headache which is diffusely situated over the brain he can have blurring of vision a double vision he can start having vomitings vomitings are usually not preceded by nausea but not always if the patient has these symptoms then immediately consult your doctor who will examine you and if required he will investigate you with a ct scan to confirm whether the ct whether the vp shunt is working or not second one second condition if the shunt is infected that is if you are having persistent fever if there is any pain or tenderness along the shunt track the shunt moves from the from behind your ear over the neck into the abdomen so if you have any tenderness or pain over the shunt track if there is redness which are signs of inflammation of the shunt track if the incision sites have become red or if there is a discharge of fluid or water from the or or pus from the incision sites these are symptoms of shunt infection in this condition you should reach your doctor immediately so hope i am very clear i have answered majority of your doubts regarding the care which you need to take after a bp shunt surgery if you have any doubts try to contact me on the number given try to message me in the whatsapp thank you